welcome to another live episode of Earthworks Hub. It's Sunday, the 25th of August, 2024. I thank you all for joining. Tonight is a special episode. You ask for it and you shall receive. All the um, listeners have been saying that they really enjoy the guest episodes. So tonight I've doubled up on that and I actually have two guests. So I'm going uh, all out tonight. We've got two guests coming on in another minute, but I will do my regular spiel, as I always say, and then we'll jump on and talk today. So you do want to hang around. I've got those guys coming on. This is on Instagram. So if you don't have uh, uh, an Instagram account, you can watch this later on when I upload it on YouTube and Spotify or Apple Podcast. All right, so I'm Ivan Olvik. I didn't say that. Um, and like I said, you asked for it and you got it. These episodes, I do upload them all, like I said earlier, so you can always go back and listen to them later on. A quick shout out to all my sponsors. So that's the Network Finance, the Bolle Group, Melbourne Tractors, Spartan Machinery, Next Gen Landscapes, JR Safety Co, Vigor Lead, Vigor, Goddings, and Earth Moving Warehouse. So, um... Thank you to all my sponsors. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor, just send me a message either on um, email, which is info at earthworkshub.com.au or hit me up with a DM. Quick project update, Project Spalding still going ahead. Uh, We've got painters in there this week, tiling's been done. Uh, We've got electricity getting connected to the actual building. And what else, we had a letterbox installed. And I think that is pretty much it. After that, I'm just going to be doing carpet tiles upstairs, some uh, floorboards downstairs, and then I'm going to need um, to do some line marking, bollards, a bit of landscaping, and it will basically be done. So uh, not very far away from finishing that factory. Uh, I am going to be moving my studio. So I'm going to do something different. When I set up my next studio, so that's within the next week or two, you will see something different. So my plan is I'm going to set it up in my garage in the next place and I'm going to actually make it like a half man cave, half podcast studio. So I want to make it something like a little whiskey bar, cigar lounge style, but with a hint of Earthworks uh, podcast in the background. So I'm working on a few things. If you've got some ideas and you want to contribute to my uh, next studio, also send me some of your... um, some of, some of your suggestions, I'm open to that, and um, it would be interesting to hear what you guys have got to say. But in the next year, week or two, you will see a new studio and a bit of a different background, so I hope you all like it. So once again, I see a lot of people logging on uh, TikTok. We're going to be t- doing a live episode with guests on Instagram, so you may not hear all their responses, so I apologize in advance to everyone that's just logging on then. Um, some posts throughout the week. So... This week, I actually got to use a little Wacker Newson 1.7 tunnel. So hopefully you guys saw that little video come out. Impressive little machine. Uh, for a 1.7 tonner, it was very, very stable. Even though it was a zero swing, very, very stable. Maybe because it had a little counterweight on it. Um, I widened the tracks, which is always a good, good thing with little 1.7s. And it actually sat nice and firm on the ground, even when I was reaching out sideways and, and like, uh, pulling up grass out of a swale drain. It did that with no problem. I loaded up a little trailer with it, which was um, a bit awkward but using the mud bucket and the, and the small bucket. I would wish I had some grabs to lift the, to grab the grass and take it out in chunks, but we managed. But overall, a good little machine. The Wacker Newson, I was very, very impressed with that. Um, that's the EZ or EZ17. So, very, very good machine. All right, so. Without further ado, let's hit the topic. I don't want to keep you guys waiting. I have two guests that are going to join me tonight to help me discuss this topic. And they are not new to the program, so they've been on here with me before, so most of you guys will know them. Um, I won't introduce them until I put them on, but I'm going to let them on in a second. Let me just log in these young gentlemen. One second. All right. Hi, oh, Jack. we got Jack on. He's a bit, a uh, bit of an angle. Then you might have to spin your camera around. You're on a different. Oh, she's one eighty. There you go. Uh, copy. There you better. go, mate. There you go. That's better. That's better. How come All you right. get? A, how come you get a whole half a screen to yourself? What's the go there? 
I'm the, I'm the like special I'm host. Being mate. ripped off. <laughs> I'm the host. I get the most. Oh no! Hey, all right, guys. Thank you very much. It works. I was actually a little bit concerned. I thought this might not work. I haven't done it before with two two guys on here. So, first of all, thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, so, a quick introduction. We've got Jack Healy from EMBE Hire. Uh, what's that? Chuka Maoma Bobcat and Excavator Hire. He's yeah, been mate. on the show before, so thanks for coming on, Jack. No worries, thank you. All right, and then we've got Shane from Terra Pro Earthworks. Thanks for joining as well. Yeah, of course, mate. Thanks for having us back. No, no worries, man. No problem. No, good to guys. Good to have you guys on here, and thank you for um, coming on and and helping with this topic. I think this topic is going to be good for a lot of guys, especially subcontractors that are out there, guys with their own businesses. So. The topic tonight is going to be how to win over a new customer um, and sort of like what methods do you use to try and get a new customer to get you to, to jump on board. And I'm not talking about like customers you've worked for before. And I know a lot of times we already win customers over because we've, you know, by word of mouth, you've already probably gotten to them, you know, um, through word of mouth or they've heard about you before, but this is like for fresh new customers. Yeah. So, Let's go into the topic. Does anybody want to start out of you two boys? Anyone want to start first and, and give, like, what would you say is one method? We can go method by method or person by person. How do you want to do it? <laughs> Someone go. You, you're, you're in charge, mate. You've got the full screen. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Look, I'll, I'll start. Look, I would say that even if, even if, um, like, uh, a lot of the, uh, like as I was going through and actually coming up with some of these um, points, I realized that a lot of the points I was writing down uh, where we take a bit of a hit. So like we money wise, I suppose it is. So like my first one I put down was maybe you can say, um, I'll, I won't charge you a float on the first job. You know, like you can say, look, let's, let's do a waiver on the float for the first job to try and win them over and get you to give you a go. What, what do you guys think? Yeah. I mean, I agree with that. Like, uh, this topic hits hits pretty hard for me because it's something I'm trying to get through at the moment, uh, and to the point where I've actually gone back to existing clients and had really good discussions with whether it's directors or company owners or things like that. Um, and I've I've asked them like, you know, what are some of the things that you go through when a potential new contractor is trying to get in? whether it be a chippy, a plumber, or a sparky, or, you know, earth moving, whatever. Um, and some of the discussions I've been having are just proof, proof, like social proof. They, one particular client that I deal with, um, they will never hire again someone that they don't know themselves, know of themselves, or a worker has a relationship with because they've had really bad experiences when they've gone outside of that network. Um, so, because I, I went down this path, I was like, oh, well, you know, would it be more beneficial for me to offer discount rate or, you know, no float for the first job and things like that? Um, but I mean, it hasn't really worked out just yet because the people that I seem to be contacting or looking to get in with work, they're the ones that everybody's looking to get in with work. So, you really need something either above and beyond everybody else or you just got to do it different. So there, there's some yeah. things I've been, I've been um, finding out like recently. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what, what about yourself, Jack? What do you think about like saying something like, you know, not charging the float for the first one or something? Yeah. So that's a, that's a topic we're not quite familiar with in the, um, country i suppose because we don't get that anyway um you know at, at best you charge your hourly rate from when you leave your yard to when you get back sort of thing but yeah as far as a float cost goes that that's a term we're unfamiliar with in this area yeah so you guys um, don't have a float but, to a job like you don't no no mate, no there, there wouldn't be a bloke in town that would be charging that at the minute wow yeah. and i don't know whether we're we're behind on that or whether it's just, it's just a, a country thing or what I, I couldn't tell you, mate, but it, yeah, I've, yeah, I, I'd never heard of it until, um, 
I'd done a bit of work for Kingston Plant High. They'd won a job here when I first went out on my own and we did a bit for them and um, they sent up their docket book and it had float in there. I was like, well, do I tick that? Do I not? Like it's, it's, you know, it's, it's 10 Ks down the road, mate. Like it's not real far. Like, yeah. Yeah. So that was the first time I'd even come across it. Yeah. Wow. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Cause, yeah. um, and I on... suppose, yeah. Sorry. I suppose it's probably a little bit different because, you know, in the country, if we get, if you're going a hundred Ks, you're going a long way from home. And you're still only an hour away. Like if you go in Melbourne, you might only be going ten k's down the road, and it still takes you two and a half hours. So it's probably a bit different too, I suppose. Oh, 100 percent, mate. <laughs> yeah, like I'm in Footscray tomorrow, and it's 115 kilometres, and I leave my yard at 4:15 in the morning. Yeah, just yeah, that's like insane, just, eh? Like, and and I get slugged about eighty six dollars worth of tolls to get there. <laughs> that's one yeah. one way. Yeah, one so way. like it's just, yeah, a float's probably not really as a money making item for you either then i suppose it's oh, just a it's a cost covering no, it's, exercise it's just, yeah it's just yeah. covering your cost it, it would be almost the same if, if you were to charge like an hourly fee i guess like your rate um from the yard or back to the yard um in i don't know uh other states or you know other regions but for instance with us it's 90 percent of the people that i've dealt with only we only charge one way so we'll only charge that one-off fee to get to the job, um, not to leave the job. I, I don't believe it's different with the bigger machines either, like 20 ton, you know, anything that needs like a low, low loader or um, a spreader deck or something. I'm not sure if they charge both ways, but 100% if you're hiring something, you're getting reamed both ways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. And if we dry hire something, we pay for it. But yeah, yeah, other than that, like, yeah, most of our work's, I mean, like 90% of my work would be within 15 minutes of my yard. So it's sort of neither here nor there, eh? That's ideal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With some of the bigger machines, I know when I used to have the bigger machines, we could recharge a flow in, uh, a float in. And then if you were there for three days or more, you, then you wouldn't charge a float back out. But if you were there for less than three days, then you charge a float out as well. Oh, or, or the customer would say, you can leave it here to your next job. And then, then you might sort of, you know, wave it, but usually yeah. Yeah, you charge like that. Sure. Um, yeah, but you do. Yeah. The only time I suppose that we did and uh, myself mainly is uh, charge as uh, when I had combos. So when I used to have like a five ton and or a posi with my tipper, then I would charge like a, an hour travel or something, you know, just to make up for that time and no float. That would be just part of the, part of the travel time. But um, yeah, sure. interesting. I never knew that. Somebody just wrote on here earlier that, they're in the country and they do charge float. So yeah. maybe it's different in different, different just, parts. Just going to mention that that's Matty Wild. I, I <laughs> know Matty real well. Um, and that, that's probably something I need to clarify. You know, like I'm talking small combos. I'm not talking 20 ton diggers. Like he, he's running big diggers that they obviously charge a float because it's necessary. Like it's yeah. not, not yeah, everyone's sure. got a float. Yeah. 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 Oh, All right. So that was the first thing I sort of thought of. Then I thought, um, you know, maybe lowering the rate, your hourly rate on the first job, maybe giving it like a bit of a discount or something, I don't know, just to try and get in the door. Like I said, this is mainly for new, brand new customers, especially like now when you don't have much work and you're probably looking at, you know, customers you've never dealt with before. So maybe that, would you guys say that's another thing people could do? I, I believe so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You could definitely have a crack at it. You've just got to be careful on the size of the job, I suppose, too, because otherwise you you can push yourself into a corner pretty easily too yeah. by trying to be too eager, I suppose, in a way. Yeah. Well, yeah. So the, the one time that I've had, I had one person I do like, I'm on the higher side of uh, rates for five ton excavator and operator. Um, there's definitely a lot, a lot of people higher than me and there's a lot of people lower than me. Uh, I had one client question me once, um, you know, Oh, it's a little bit more than we're used to paying. And I just straight up said, look, I will, I will happily do the job to the rate that you're used to paying if you're not happy with the work I'm doing. So this is what I charge. Let's get one day under our belt and go from there. And within about three hours, we just said, no, just no, no stress at all. <laughs> so there was, um, there was and, and definitely like you don't want to be discounting yourself. Like you've come up with your rate for, you know, you've come up with what you charge for, for that's what you're worth. It's like, well, you shouldn't, you know, you're not buying a Ferrari on a freaking you know, Mazda budget. So yeah. not saying we're for, I'm a Ferrari, but <laughs> I like to, 
like to think that you know you're offering a premium service, so you are paying a slight, a slightly higher um, average of, of rate. Um, but yeah, it, it's a it's an interesting one to try and discuss with a, a new potential client. Definitely, um, I don't know a lot of the things I've been doing, which might be well, I, I'm positive that most of the people I've contacted with this uh, probably have never received anything like it, but having a uh, you know design background and, and marketing background and things like that, um, I've actually been putting together PDFs with like you know high end photos of the digger and the services I offer and what working with TerraPro would be like and um, you know, it's all packaged up in this really beautiful looking PDF with my rates uh, and everything like that to the fact where I've had a few people go, mate, like I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. yeah. And true, it is true, yeah. like you say, yeah, you, your work will, your work reflects your rate, I suppose. And then, um, yeah, there is somebody just wrote in there before that, you know, why should we, why should we be out of pocket? I suppose um, I'm going through the couple of ones that, that are, going to take us out of pocket that's probably one way to do it but there are other ways too which we can discuss in a minute but i'll just sort of go we'll go through those first um sure. you know and i was saying as well like apart from maybe lowering your your rate and you can say to them like i'll lower it on the first day just to see how i go and then after that you know it's going to go up back up to my rate you know or you can yeah. say if it, maybe the first few hours is going to be on the reduced rate and then after that once you have if you think you're happy then we'll go back to my rate you know i don't know maybe something like that yeah um or, or well, the other one is if you're quoting the job, maybe reducing your profit margin a little bit for this first job that you're doing for them, if you're doing a quoted one, and then saying, look, you know, I'm happy to not make as much on this one, you know, and then prove yourself and then hopefully get more out of them, you know? Um, yeah, they're all definitely options. There's no worries about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about the listeners? Is it if, while we're while we're actually discussing if, if while we're discussing this, if any listeners have any points, like some of the guys that have been writing stuff already, um, yeah, also let us know what you do to attract um, new customers and to to get in with them. So yeah, Sydney Rockwall Constructions is saying quality reflects your value in his eyes. So that's true. One hundred percent, one hundred percent, and that that's why. Uh... For instance, in my case, I'm being very uh, active on socials and I post my work and walk through, you know, I do some lives on what I'm doing and why I'm doing it because from the clients that I have been interacting with, uh, it's it's all, all come back to, they literally go to Instagram. So I've created a website recently because I do have a couple of, um, you know, national clients and I felt I needed to create a website to show, you know, that's that I'm, I'm hitting that kind of box or checking that box for those bigger clients. Uh, and even talking with them, they're like, no, man, we just go straight to Instagram. <laughs> so you, you kind of, and like one of those companies is, you know, they're a global company that, you know, they're doing like $5 billion a year um, and they go to Instagram. So it's pretty awesome to hear that. Um, hence why, you know, you want to be showcasing your quality and, what you're doing to kind of get off of that next level of service. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? So something else that I had was um, maybe staying back a bit later. Like if it's, especially if it's a job that they want to get done and it's sort of semi urgent or a bit urgent, maybe staying back that night, you know, even if you don't usually stay back after eight hours, maybe staying back, just, just trying to help them finish that job or telling them like, you know, if you want me to start a bit later, instead of early or if you want to do a, a night shift or something just to get, you know, get in the door with them. Um, that's probably another thing that I, that I could think of. And as well as maybe sometimes staying back a bit later and then maybe not even charging. So if you stay back for an hour to finish something on the first job, maybe don't charge them for that. And then just mention that from now on it will be, but today I'm just going to help you out. I don't know, what do you, what do you guys think of that? I think, uh, um, or for me, I I think going the extra mile all the time just sort of goes without saying. If, if someone's got a job that they want to get done today, then you just you do what you can to help them out. And I mean, nine times out of ten, we're all pushing for time anyway. So if you can get it done today and get to the next one tomorrow, well, sweet. Like, yeah, you just help them out where you can. If they want to do it on a Saturday because that's when it works with their shutdown or a Sunday or whatever. If you can do it, you just you just make it happen. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm a believer of um really trying to find out what the client needs from that project, whether it is 
Uh, I had an example recently of a retaining wall I built in the early days of starting. Um, and I probably was slightly more expensive than other quotes um, or other, other people had, might, might have offered. But what I found out by working with the client was they, their biggest concern was tidy, not disturbing the existing driveway, which was an um, extremely steep CT driveway, crush, um, you know, cement treated crush rock. Uh, and and we were working with clay, so they didn't want any clay to go throughout the property. They didn't, you know they wanted to keep it neat. We didn't want to have any issues with rain washing silt and clay into the house, which was lower than the work itself. Um, and so by finding out exactly what that project needed and the client needed, I came up with a method of getting that job done neatly without any issues of clay. Um, and you know we left the job spick and span, and that client was super happy to pay that little bit extra to make sure that you know, someone didn't come in guns blazing, smash it out in a couple of days with a heap of boys and you know, trash the joint and ruin the driveway and things like that. So really finding out what the client needs from the project, whether it's, you know, is, it, is it a time crunch? Do you need six days or seven days a week? Is it a week long project? I'm happy to do seven days. You know, like I feel like being your own, um, well, being in charge of your own business there is no weekends. It's like if I have to start on a Tuesday and finish, you know, three weeks time on a Wednesday, it, it's nothing to me because if I'm hang, hankering for time off, I'll just schedule the next project to start in a couple of days after, you know? Yeah. I suppose like you're saying though, it doesn't always mean money. Like sometimes I suppose the thing is, yeah, you're right. Every customer has some type of problem. So you've got to be the solution to that. So if you can give them solutions to try and fix whatever problem is, they'll be happy to put you on. So I think something um, that I always think about is I always try and have like um, tip sites in mind, um, other subbies in case we need other machines. Uh, so that when they say to me like, Hey, you know, um, we need you to come and dig this out. And then you say to them, all right, so what are you going to do with the dirt? They say, Oh, I'm not sure. You can say to them, well, I've got a tip site for you. If you need, I've got, I can organize trucks. So then they'll choose you over someone else. Cause you, you can say, well, I can, be your, your overall solution, you right? know? Yeah, certainly. And again, that's like a communication thing that it's, you just need to be able to have an open network of, of discussing with your client, like what, what do you need? What does the job require? I can offer X, Y, Z, um, and don't get caught out with free tip sites. <laughs> I've been done for that before. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, look, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll get a free tip site. We'll, we'll pump it out. Uh, and, you know, the free tip site was like, yeah, mate, I'll take all of it. They took seven. I still had seven left to get rid of. And they were gone. Like the site, the site was locked. And then the only way I could take it was a, a place I had to pay. And I just, yeah, yeah. I wore it out of my pocket. Mm. It's so, funny. Yeah, don't, get sucked, don't get sucked into free tip sites. <laughs> It's funny you say that because I was just going to say another thing you could do is you could say to the customer, um, you know, if, if you do happen to have a, a free tip site, you can say to, like, oh, look, I'm not going to charge you for the tip this time or give a, do a little dis say, you know, usually it's, it's five bucks a meter, but I can, I can do it today for two bucks a meter just to get in and help them. But like you say, you could get caught out as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I mean, down here, for instance, on the peninsula, there's only two technical like you know legal places you can take commercial fill or you know from from our line of work um and and they can be really picky like you can have clean sand one site will be like oh it's got too many roots in it we're going to charge 20 bucks a meter but on an, any, any other given day it's only five um so yeah i've always been pretty clear on just saying look i believe it'll be this but at the end of the day it's up to the tip site and I don't hide that information from clients either. Like, if I'm, you know, I've openly said, hey, you're welcome to call the site. They're the only place down here. Like, for me, it's pretty black and white. Like, I don't, I'm not, you know, some people are like, oh, yeah, I've got to pay 30 bucks. And they're like, well, where are you taking it? And like, you know, people try and dodge questions and fib and get caught out. Whereas it's, you know, just be transparent. Be like, hey, this is where I've got it going today. We've got some really good clean stuff. I can take it here for a cheaper rate. The dirtier stuff, we get a better rate at the other place, um, and they can always call and cross reference if they want to. Like, it's just yeah, you know, what it costs, what it costs. Yeah, I can see Moba's writing something there. Uh, Moba Australia are saying, uh, do you charge extra for utilizing technology such as two D or three D, and does this help you win jobs to be more efficient? 
That's a good question. Actually, Jack, you might be good at answering that. <laughs> yeah, once again. <laughs> once again. Once again, the old country way. You just um you grin and bear it. So when we've implemented the technology, we've implemented 3D across both machines at the minute. Um, and I've just banged the hourly rate up 10 bucks an hour across the board, whether you're using it or not. Um, it's, it's too hard to, to go do a job for a bloke and he doesn't want to use it, but it's easier for you to use it. So you use it anyway. So then you're out of pocket or, you know, it, it, you just, it just saves the arguments or they say, oh, you've only used it for four hours today. We're only paying for four hours for the extra 10 or 15 bucks an hour or whatever. So it just across the board, we just put it up. The blokes that use it and see you using it want you to use it all the time. The blokes that have never seen it, they're, they're oblivious to it. They're just, yeah, they don't want to know about it. Yeah. That's yeah, a good that's way. I, I definitely wanted to know how that goes. Um, I've, I've been, I've, I mean, I've met with MOBA. We had a bit of a discussion on site in Footscray, but uh, if I was using 2D and specialising in a bit of that kind of stuff, I would be on a similar page where I'd like to up my, my uh, hourly rate. But for instance, 3D on like 13s and 15s and 20s, like down in Melbourne, it's 40 bucks an hour when they're using that stuff. Um, and I mean, the jobs that they're using it on though are used to that. Like they're not really doing that with a domestic, you know, side cut or anything. You know, the, the jobs that are requiring it are, are actually- 100%. Up for, uh, for that tech. But I like- 100%. Kind of stuff with that. I would, I would definitely, um, flat rate would be something I'd look into for sure. Yeah. Like I say, that is, that there's there's two or three mobs that we work for that, you know, when I say they use it all the time, they know what they're looking for. Like they, they have models to give you for their job. So they know that they're going to be paying for it because they want you to use it because you've got it. They've got the design. They want you to use it. But blokes that don't have a design and go, oh, you know, we can't use it. Well, you can because you can do an infield design and use it. So yeah. that, they're just oblivious to the fact that you, you're using it for them. You know what I mean? Like they don't realize that it's actually speeding the job up or making it neater, making it you oh, know, faster. Like, they're, yeah. they're, they're just it, oblivious. It'll be the standard. It has to be the standard because it's so much more efficient. There's no, how do you say, mate, like one of these retaining wall jobs I did was because a previous earth mover had overcut a site by a meter. Like how the fuck are you going to do? Do that with GPS. You would be surprised yeah. how easy that would be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Even even with it, you can get yourself into some pickles. <laughs> let me be assured. Yeah, it's, oh. and it's as simple as uh, not changing your bucket when you change buckets. Yeah, yeah, oh. that can uh, that can get you in all sorts of trouble real fast, eh? Mm. But you'll only do it a couple of times because you will learn. You yeah. will learn. Yeah. Sure. I know the biggest one that um, is a stickler for, I guess, detail in my experience is basements. Like the amount of times I've had blokes come over, like not not aggressive, but just just fretting that you're going to over excavate or detail the sides in between piers and things. Oh, shotcrete's yeah. expensive. Shotcrete's expensive. I'm like, mate, I'm not. Not digging a vertical trench, you know, like I sorry, a horizontal trench. I'm just detailing your 150 back or whatever it might be. But they always, always a stickler for being precise when you're detailing basement walls. That's for sure. Oh, and then you, and then you touch the you touch one little bit and a whole bunch falls out, and then it's oh, like yeah, ends up off. being 500 behind the wall instead of a 150. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know. especially if there's rocks and that, it's the worst. You pick one rock and then they all just everything starts collapsing out from behind the pier. I've been there, done that, been there. Um, I suppose, yeah, and then uh, Earthworking Australia saying, I think he's referring back to when we are talking about, you know, he's doing what we said, favours. Offering to do favours when you start with a client will always bite you in the ass, and may, and you may lose the work in the future when you hit them up for the normal rates because they'll say, they'll remind you of those favours. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. Um yeah. No, the other, oh, what's Atacama saying? Shane sounds pretty quiet. Oh, your sound yeah. might be just I feel like I don't know. I, I use the headphones, but I don't think the um, mic connects to the headphones. I think it still comes through the phone. I've moved it closer, so hopefully that helps. But. Oh, 
Yeah, it does seem to go up and down a little bit, so yeah, apologies for the sound out of karma, but we'll work it out. Um, all right, so the other, like I was saying, though, yeah, you always want to have some sort of solution. What about, I suppose, as a bare minimum, if you want to look attractive to a, a new customer, some of the bare minimums that I come up with is, for example, you need to have all your documentation right to start with at least. So at least you can tell them, listen, I've got all my public liability, all my insurance, uh, vehicle insurances, up-to-date risk assessment, all my tickets, all my maintenance history and the pre-start book. Would you guys agree? Like you got to have, at least you got to show them that you've got all those things at the, you know, like before you even start. You'd be shocked. I think, yeah. How many people don't. <laughs> yeah, you have to have it. And I, I just, if you, if you be, I, yeah. want to be up there for sure. Yeah. Sorry, go Jack. Yeah. No, no, you, you, you hit the nail on there. It's just a given, I reckon. I don't even reckon that should need explaining. Eh? If you don't have it, you don't have it. Like, you're, you're yeah. mad. Yeah. That, that's that's rule number one. Everything's, you got to, just for your own sake, have all your ducks in a row. Like, yeah. 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 No, I agree. That I have I have seen, I think um, Shane was just starting to say that, yeah, you'd be surprised that a lot of people don't, still don't have it even these days. They haven't got, like, their risk assessments are out of date or they haven't got their history. And I'm like, yeah. just, just you're better off just to make sure because you don't want to get on site and then you're there stuffing around like trying to quickly scramble and get someone to come out and do a risk assessment in the last second. And uh, yeah, it's just too hard, man. Just better get it organized, especially if you're trying to win that new customer. You want them to look at you and go, wow, this guy's got everything. Well, that's been my foot in the door on a few jobs. I think I've definitely gotten in with at least two that I know very clearly. Um, I, I got in over somebody else because I had everything in line. Um, you know, all my servicing I stick with. I stick with Cabalco for my machine, not not purely for any reason other than keeping my warranty up to check. I don't have to stress about it. Ticks all the boxes. It comes up like on my machine when I need to get get it done. My risk assessment, it's the company I use, sends me a reminder every 12 months that, hey, your, your risk assessment's due for a renewal. Um, I've upped my public liability to get on some of the bigger jobs because it was needed. So 20 million, a lot of companies now won't, they, 10 million's not enough. Um, and then all your insurances, work cover, everything like that. And I find just having a folder with all your PDFs as well, when you are um, getting ready to go to a job that requires that style of, of paperwork, just shoot it off the night before they've got it they've uploaded it into their systems hammer tech or whatever it might be and um then there's no delays in the morning and you just hit the ground running and you know being efficient yeah yeah um and i suppose the other thing is also you got to make sure that if you are trying to impress this new customer at least you turn up with all the correct ppe you know um when you first turn up or even when you go go there to introduce yourself and you walk on their site, you want to make sure that you, you look, you look the part. So you really go on and you really show them that you, you've got all the right PPE. And then also when you do talk to them and, and they, if they want to see your machines or they're talking to you about what you've got, you tell them what you've got. And then when you do turn up, make sure it's clean and maintained and they, so they don't turn up with a, with a shit box on their site the first day. <laughs> yeah. Not going to last long. Yeah. 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 Um, what else, what other points have you got? Have you guys got any points as well? Like what would you, to win the new customer over any, anything I haven't said? I think you probably just touched on a little one. I think presentation speaks for itself, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's your machine and your truck and all that sort of gear, or whether it's, you know, your, your appearance in general, you know, with, you know, rock up with your shirt on and, you know, all fluoro, you don't have a vest over the top of a hoodie that you fucking wore last Saturday on when you're on the piss and, you know, just just be tidy in general, you know, I, I think that speaks for itself too. Yeah. 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 And I've then all myself out a few times looking a bit rough around the edges, you know, doing, doing some big days and haven't really looked in the mirror for like a week or something. I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> I look like a bit of a hobo. I have to spruce up a bit going, <laughs> going to a new site. Yeah. It's funny. It's true. Yeah. Appearance is, is big. Well, um, and something someone told me once is that, uh, a customer told me once that when you're when you turn up the site, he used to say the be, the best way he can judge whether you're going to actually be you know good or not is he'd watch as you unload your machine off your truck. So if you're turning up with a, a five ton or a posi or something, you're taking it off the back of a truck on the ramps. They'd watch how you actually 
take it off and you know if are you doing it nice and smooth or are you bouncing around everywhere do you look like you're about to flip the machine over because i was saying a lot of times you know guys turn up and they can hardly take it off the, off the truck and they're thinking oh this guy's going to be here digging all day how's this going to go yeah but, but uh, you got dirt side excavations they're saying definitely public appearance is a big key factor yeah uh, like so when i first got my digger i wanted a custom paint job and uh, unfortunately that wasn't or didn't seem to be achievable uh, through the traditional methods. <laughs> so one of my closest friends does uh, wraps and graphics for quite a large company. And I picked out this, you know, what I thought was an epic, you know, color shifting blue fucking gold, <laughs> silver looking color. And I like, it would have been amazing like, you know, to see it. Um, but I genuinely stopped myself from doing that because, you know, these bigger sites, you'll get some old boy on there that's just like, what's this fucking unicorn rainbow machine over here? Get it out of here, you know? Yeah. Um, and I have heard, I have heard of some things like that, you know, like people's names and, you know, some slogans and things, getting people in a bit of strife or, you know, people judging because of those things. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say them, but I'm sure you can piece a few things together. But yeah, yeah, yeah def definitely like your appearance and um, the way the company comes across is is a big thing. Yeah. What about yourself, Jack? You you've got some clean machines. I had someone that you know, uh, or someone that I know that you worked for, and he was mentioning how your machine looked tip top, and look, he was saying to me that he thought it was like a brand new machine when it when it rocked up. Yeah, you try it artist i suppose my um my old boss would never hire anyone if they had a dirty ute if, if they rocked in with a dirty ute he, he wouldn't put you on because he said that that's how he if that's how he treats his ute that's how he's going to treat my machine so he ain't getting in it and it, that sort of stuck from pretty early on i suppose <laughs> so yeah try and keep your stuff tidy yeah that goes yeah, that's a fair employees with work use as well yeah Employees yeah, with work use, I used to get mine detailed professionally once a month, and people be like, "Why are you paying money to do it?" I'm like, "Mate, I got a free Ute with fuel. Like, all I have to do is pay like a couple hundred bucks to get it professionally detailed. Like, why would I not do that? You know?" Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. Because, like you say, you're, if they're not taking care of their vehicle, how, how are they going to take care of uh, the work work um, off the office, which is basically their machine? So, yeah, true. Very good point. Yeah, so appearance. Appearance is a big thing, yeah. So and that's also like I said, if you're approaching a customer, even if you're not on the work site, so you might go and see them while they're on the work site and turn up, you also gotta look the part when you first go in and, and speak to them. Because that you know, that's your that's their first appearance. That's their first opinion of you, I suppose. They say opinions don't matter, but they do. The first one definitely counts. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So going back, a couple of things that I mentioned, I suppose, where one is where we're probably uh, taking a bit of a hit. So I suppose you can reduce your, maybe you can reduce your rate a little bit for the first job and, or even for the first few hours or something, say, until they get to see how you are. The other one was to reduce uh, your profit margin if you're quoting a job. Um, what was some of the other things I was saying? So, yeah, you can um, waive the float fee on the first one. Maybe you can also even charge for a single machine. Even if you're doing a combo, you might be able to say, well, look, I'll only charge you as if I'm using one machine for today just to, you know, get, get in the door. Um, and, and then the other ones were like, yeah, staying back a bit to try and finish jobs, get them done or get them over the line or staying back a bit and not, maybe not charging for that time just to try and like finish something off. Um, what else was there? So... I also had, um, yeah, having solutions always for them. So I was saying, like, you know, always make sure you can try and offer them some tip sites or if you've got some other guys that you know or other op owner operators with trucks because often I'll, I'll do a job and I'll say, oh, we need to get some trucks in. So then I call guys that I know always. Um, and then, yeah, tip sites and stuff. And like previous contractors I had might not have been able to get their hands on someone like that to help them out, yeah? So if you can say, look, I can do all that for you, I can get rid of the material while I'm here, or I can, um, I can go and hire a roller and jump on the roller for you and stuff. Then they're going to be happy, yeah. Um, get the job done. Yeah. Has it has there been times where you guys have had to do other things? So 
What about yeah. like maybe jumping out oh. and doing doing other things? Yeah, like either on the tools or jumping on on another piece of equipment. Do you guys ever do that? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Sixty percent of my life, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every bit of it. Yeah. Every yeah. bit of it. The, yeah. commercial, the commercial job I was on um, that went for the year and a half. Mate, I built, I actually built and assembled playgrounds. I read plans. I came up with methods on how to solve solutions that were way above my pay grade. Uh, brought chainsaws in to sculpt the the log bloody seating. Sourced the log seating. Um, <laughs> the client had a particular supplier that was getting them for an astronomical amount of money because uh, that needed to be certain, you know, time dried. It was all like proper engineered specs to the materials they needed to provide. Yeah. Um, but I'm lucky enough, my ability to s- s- source any kind of solution to a problem is vast. And sure enough, I know a guy that knows a guy that knows a logging mill and made a phone call and got what was meant to be a $3,000 log for 600 bucks and everybody still made some money and was happy. Um, so yeah, like, the amount of work that gets done on the ground that I like, I'm willing to do and happy to do, and I'm sure Jack has as well. Is yeah, out of the machine at all times, mate. Like building retaining walls, lifting concrete sleepers by hand. Like yeah, we'll do anything to get the job done. Yeah, I suppose yeah, you can mention that to them when you first approach them. Say, look, I'm willing to do some you know, other things if you need me to. I've had operators where I've turned up on jobs doing the same same thing, doing some landscaping, or I think we were doing like a footy over once. And I went to go see my um, operator, see how I was going. And he, I saw him on the roller. And I said to him, hey, what are you doing? You're on the roller. And he goes, yeah, I've been on this for the last three days. But they're still, <laughs> they're still he had, they've had him on the roller for three days. And he goes, I don't care. It's something different. I'm not in the machine. So I don't care. We're still yeah. getting paid the same. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you've got to be willing to do a bit of everything, I suppose. Yeah, it doesn't extra. matter what it is, it's there. Yeah. What's that, Jack? Say again. I said, I don't reckon it matters what it is. If they're paying, I don't care what it is. Yeah, I'll, I'll go sweep the side up, mate. I don't care. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what? I'll someone... give me 10 hours, I'm happy. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's good. You know what? When you think about it, you, your machine's not running. You're not paying for diesel. So you might, you're still getting paid the same. You might as well just go and sweep a little bit or use the um, the whacker plate or whatever you got to do, you know? Yeah, even like pulling like the jobs I'm on at the moment, I have to bring my own drills and things like that to pull down fences that have been, you know, temporarily screwed together and things um, to get access to site, you know, rather than letting the contractor or the, sorry, the client, you know, have his workers be there to do it. I'm just like, well, I'll just bring all my own stuff and do it myself. Yeah. So, and then at the end of the day, making sure it's all back up, you know, so no one can get back into the site. So timber screws, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Nothing to do with the job itself that I'm doing, but it's a part of access and um, it just needs to be done. And by offering that to the client, they don't have to stress about having one of their workers there just for 30 minutes of work every day, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got Sydney Rockwall Construction is saying loyalty also plays a part from both sides, but I see sometimes the cost of machine hire outweighs the loyalty and things you've done. Yeah, very true. And then Garefa Earthworks is saying, fellas, thoughts on how you charge combo rates when two machines on site, but only one getting operated at a time. That's a good one. I had, I can answer that if you want. Do you guys want to start or do you want me to go? No, you go. Oh, right. You have a go and then I'll... Uh... <laughs> there you go. There was, um, and in, uh, I had a lot of combos going and sometimes, um, like same thing, I'd have two machines sitting on site and I used to have some, on some customers, some customers were good. They used to say, that's fine. You know, he still charges a combo rate because we've got that, um, you know, we've got the ability to have both machines on site. And even if you're only jumping on one, at least they've got that option of using the other one whenever they need to. But then I did have other customers that were saying like, oh, well, that machine hasn't been used for two, three days, or you've only used that one most of the day. So you should only be charging me for one. Um, but uh, I believe you should be getting combo rate the whole time. Um, that's my opinion. And that's what I used to push for. I used to push and say, well, if you want, I'll take my machine away. Otherwise, you know, you're paying combo because I've got both on here and then you, you don't have to float another one in. You're saving yourself costs. Whereas I could be putting that out and working separately if I, if I wanted to. I'm getting char- charging for both. But yeah, what do you guys think? You go, Jack. Um, so 
I, I don't do it, but a fellow I know does it. And what he does is he'll dry hire both machines to the customer and then he will charge, say, 80, 90 bucks an hour for his operator to be there and it doesn't matter what he's driving then sort of thing rather than charging full whack for both sort of things. So he sort of still gets a bit extra than what he would for running one. But, yeah, they've got both there sort of thing. But I... I don't do it. Ninety nine percent of my work's in the digger, mate. So yeah, it is what it is. Like, yeah, I take the skid steer to some jobs, but most of the time the skid steer might only do. It does two hundred and fifty hours a year. So what's that a week? Two hours a yeah, week? Yeah, it's not much. Yeah, not much. Yeah. 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 So what what, what were you going to say as well, Shane? Uh, I've had similar experience with um, the dry hiring side of things. So I was supplying machines dry hire on the commercial job um, and I was supplying them at a better rate than what that client was getting them direct to a uh, same hire mob. Um, and in doing that, it was the same thing. Like they were, ch- I was charging purely for me and my machine with my hourly rate. And then if they needed an extra operator, I would charge you know, however much it was an hour for the operator and they were already dry hiring the machine and that kind of was the agreement. But the agreement was clearly discussed from the get-go. So that wasn't like a, oh, if you need it, I'll do it. And then the invoice comes in and, hey, this is what's happening. Um, and then jobs that are clearly requiring, say, like a five-ton and posi combo, um, I will discuss if it's, you know, only me operating, then it might be just an extra charge for the hourly. But in saying that, I do it with my truck when I'm running the digger and truck as a combo um, and kind of a standard down here that I've just learned from others is around 20 bucks, maybe 25 bucks an hour extra on top of your um, excavator rate, give or take. I've got an eight ton, uh, sorry, an eight cube body. Other people might have a full size 10 ton, uh, 10 cube body. Mm-hmm. Um, and in doing that, I actually ran a fair few loads recently out of a job where I chewed through 360 bucks worth of diesel. I'm like, well, the 20 bucks an hour hasn't hasn't even covered the cost of my diesel. Like, so I actually went backwards on that job if I had to just said, no, nah, hire a tandem in, I'm just going to excavate. Um, obviously, more than happy to do it. It was, it's my job. I'm aware of the, the cost involved and it's a long-term project. Um, but you can get caught out whether you're, you know, if you've got a local tip side or somewhere close, then 20 bucks an hour is fine. And people will argue that, oh, you know, you're not using the diesel in your machine. I'm like, mate, a five tonner uses 40, maybe 45 litres a day. Like, what am I really losing out on there, you know? So, yeah, I was running up and down the Monash to a tip site. You know, you got traffic, you got school zones. Uh, and I think I was averaging about 500k, 500 k's a day. So, yeah. Of, okay, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, I... I um. I've had different, I've taken different options. Yeah. So I had a company where we did some stuff, some uh, hardscape work and that and, and landscape. And uh, yeah, I had a machine that I hired. So I think I dry hired my posi to them and then gave them my operator with a five tonner on, on a regular hourly rate. And then if he needed to jump in the posi track, they just paid me the, the dry hire rate for the day as well. Uh, then I've, I ran with a landscaping company for nearly a year and had my five tonner and posi on there and just charged them. Actually, when I had the, the five tonner posi and tipper, it used to be like 150 an hour for all three, no matter what, whichever one I use doesn't matter. So whether I use one all day or all three, it didn't matter, but I'd leave them all on site all the time as well. So yeah, I suppose there's different ways you can do it. Um, Atacama Earthworks is saying combo rate or dry hire. Oh, what have I done here? Uh, combo rate or dry hire on the second one, if it gets used, if not the stand down rate and then earthworking Australia says if a client asks you to bring both machines, then they pay combo rate because that second machine could be on another job earning a full rate. And that, that's what I was saying. That's, that used to be my argument to them as well. Um, yeah. So have you guys got anything else to add there? Yeah. I mean, I guess it just needs to be tailored to what the job requires. Like you you if you're on site, you should have a pretty clear indication on, We've lost Jack. <laughs> oh, we've lost him. Come back, come back, Jack. <laughs> Must uh, be no reception out in the country, yeah. <laughs> you sh- should be able to get a pretty clear indication on are you going to be running both, you know, hard, is one just going to be sitting there and just used for, like, ferrying a few things over to site? Like, you know, you've got to tailor it to suit. I mean, I think the, um, 
yeah, the the longer term stuff probably dry hire is uh, maybe a more suitable way to go. Um, but again, tailor to each job's requirements, and and you're only going to be able to do that by getting a clear indication on what the job needs and um, go from there. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I suppose you've got to be willing to work with them. So like I was saying, to, to try and win a customer over that, you, know, you might say to them for the first day, look, I'm only going to charge you for a single machine instead of a combo just to get in the door. And then you say to them, but every day after that, we'll be back to combo. Uh, could be another option, you know, but um, yeah, that's that's how um, that's how I was doing it too. I should just charge combo all the time. Um, yeah, I, def- yeah, if... If you've got your machine there, you need to be charging for it because yeah, it's exactly that. Like it could be elsewhere doing something else. Yeah, yeah. And sure. And even if, if you don't have a worker in it, that's not the, it's not the point. The point is like you've paid you, that machine costs money. Like you can't just have it there willy nilly for the sake of it. Yeah, um, yeah. I've had I've had customers say to me, "Well, you're the only one operating. You've got no other operators now. So where else are you going to put it?" And I'd say, well, "It doesn't matter if I." If I choose to, I can say, well, I'll, I'll get an operator and put it somewhere. But um, if you want two machines, they'll sit here. And if you want that luxury of being able to get me to swap between machines when you need me to, then you need to pay for it as a combo. That's what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had it recently with this auger. So obviously I own my own auger and a few other things, but uh, I had to hire a smaller diameter um, attachment and a heap of extensions, uh, brought them to site, had them on site for three days and then we, we never once used them because we weren't happy with the engineering side of it um and you know i had to return that gear and wear a fee for hiring it but um I, it was my prerogative to not charge the client because we do have a good relationship and you know um the job's got plenty of fat on it i guess but or well, it's keeping me employed for long enough um, yeah but yeah, so you, those little things as well, like if you're hiring a specialty attachment or equipment, machine, whatever it might be, um, you know, you need to be charging for it, especially on a commercial job. If they ask you to get something and you go and get it and it doesn't get used, it doesn't matter. You ask me to get it, so yeah. sorry, you've got to wear it. Actually, that's probably not a bad thing. I forgot. I didn't even mention that. Um, what about if you want to win a customer over, you say to them, look, I'm not going to charge you for an attachment for the first day, you know, like that's maybe another option if you really want to win them over and say, look, I won't charge you for the hammer today or I won't charge you for the auger. Could I've be done an- it. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. did it with like my hydraulic grab. You know, I take that any job that has demo or removal of concrete, I'll take it. The same particular job I was talking about, I didn't, I used it two days, but I might have only used it for say 15, 20 minutes. Um, definitely needed it like it was required. And I just didn't bother charging the client. I own it outright. You know, we've got a good relationship. Um, I was using a rock hammer and things, and I was charging accordingly for the rock hammer. So I didn't feel the need to charge for the hydraulic grab. Um, but in saying that, I do note it on my invoice too. You know, hydraulic grab was used, didn't no charge. Yes, I do that too, man. That's a good thing. I, I, I make it known on there that I did use it, but I chose not to charge. So that they do remember like, oh yeah, that's right. He did, he did use it, but it didn't charge me. Cause then I can always um, say that one day, like, Hey man, I, I didn't charge you for that time and that time and that time. And they can always go back and refer to it and I know, and they can see it. Yeah. It's, it's a good way to do it, man. Yeah. You'd never want to, yeah. like, you don't ever want to be in a relationship with someone where they're going to try and use anything against you. Like that's not yeah. someone you want to be working for, but it's just that clear transparency to say, Hey, like, you know, if there ever was a doubt in their mind, they can clearly see what you've done. Like my, my invoices are practically novels. <laughs> so everything's detailed down to, you know, pretty fine, um, yeah, fine detail, I guess. Like when yeah. I arrived, when I leave, what I used, I, mate, I go as far as putting down kilometers driven in the truck when I'm using the truck for hire. So they can see the value that they're getting. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, like yep. I did 1,091 1, kilometers in four days on that particular job. And they're getting a combo rate, but they can see, fuck, that truck's driven to Sydney. Yeah. So. That's not, that's not bad. You've never considered that. I mean, I suppose, yeah, a highly detailed invoice can be, can be very handy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Jack, you're back again, man. We lost you. We lost you for a bit. <laughs> yeah, I'll find us all. thought she was going to have a nap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. I don't know if you. I don't know if you saw what we were talking about then, but we went through a couple of things. Uh, we 
talking about oh, so, well, we continued talking about um using your machines as a combo on site but only getting paid for one um and then uh, we hit a few other things um what else well and that's right we're talking about uh whether or not you should you know sometimes waive the fee on um an attachment if you want to try and win a customer over so once again it seems like we're always the ones that lose out isn't it it's funny <laughs> well i didn't know people charged for a sieve bucket up until recently uh you know and then going through it, i'm like well yeah the wear and tear on your machine is just massive yeah. um so yeah i had to find out some info about that but i don't own one but then again if i did own one and was sifting through like maybe some light soil after doing a green waste job like i probably wouldn't charge for that but doing demo yeah i'm definitely charging like my machine's copping and beating yeah yeah hang on what's happening here at a karma earthworks you're saying sometimes five i'll sometimes give a free attachment for free is not a bad idea idea it works to educate the client on how more efficient you can be with the right tool uh okay yeah yeah i get that and then if they call you again talk to i think he's got the um he's got the bloody encon or steel wrist or something i I love atacama stuff yeah yeah that's right get on here what are you doing yeah hey we'll get you on here next week atacama you're coming on next week mate that's it you got no choice you come you're coming on next week Oh, are you up for it, Atacama? Are you going to tell us? It'll be in next week. Um, I think he's right. got like forks and, you know, all the grabs and, you know, having those um, 360 attachments. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure, you know, there'd be, there'd be a million times that that bloke would have to, you know, he's got it so it's convenient for themselves, but then that client doesn't really understand what they're getting for free, you know? He's saying no English. <laughs> no English. <laughs> uh, I like it. I like it. I like it. Oh, you never know. We might get him on there. We might get him on. All right. No, that's good, man. Look, I, I, um, I think we hit a few good points there. Hopefully, everybody got it, got something uh, out of this, especially now when it's a little bit quieter. Uh, maybe not in all parts of Australia, but especially in Melbourne, though, it is very quiet. So if you're trying to win over a new client, hopefully we've given you a few options there. It seems, unfortunately, like a lot of times we take a bit of a hit. Um, you know, by waiving fees or waiving attachments and this and that, but it might be what you need to do just to get in that door. But then there's those other things we spoke about, yeah, like presentation, um, you know, having all the right documentation and this and that. So I suppose there's some things that you can do that um, we won't take as much of a hit. Um, what uh, Anything else you guys want to add? It's we're about nine o'clock now. So anything you guys want to add before we finish up? No, don't talk too. Don't all jump in too quick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is there anything Mate. else you guys want to add, or is there something I've missed? I just think, uh, um, you know, it, it's it's all basic stuff in it. You've just got to do your best and do a good job, and you know, the, they'll ring if they see it. Like it, quality over quantity every time. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And I like and putting in the groundwork. So my whole um, experience and things I've been finding out lately with this side of it is, again, back to the social proof. They want to know that you're capable. They want to know you've got your documents. And like, if you can kind of put that to them before they even have to ask, um, you know, that's a that's a good kind of taking the foot first foot forward. You know, like if you can present that in a way that they don't have to do any work to find out. Um, that's definitely going to benefit you every time. I suppose, yeah, that's right. When you may be giving them your, your rates, you also slip in there all your documentation. That's so it's all there and say, listen, in case we do go ahead, here's all my stuff. Um, and I suppose another thing is yeah, you could even say to them like, hey, do you want me to come out and meet you on site beforehand? And let's have a look at what you've got and see what you see what I can do for you. So that way, you know, when, when I do turn up, you hit the ground running or if you need me to organize something else, I can do it. I suppose that's another thing, yeah, you can, you can say I'll come out prior and have a bit of a look. I will offer to go to every site. Yep. There is, there is, there is never going to be a time that I won't offer to come out to site because, as as an employee for you know majority of my working life, uh, the amount of times you got burnt over and thrown under the bus because somebody didn't go and look at something or check a, a check a 
access measurement or you know neighboring properties overhead power lines trucks all that kind of stuff so i will never be um the bloke that doesn't go to site to have a look and just throw someone at it so that's definitely a big one for me yeah yeah and another thing i do is i always do like if i'm quoting a job um i always look at the address and then do like a street view on yeah. Google Maps, yeah. So I always have a look yeah. and see you know, what's there. Like you say, is there power lines? What's across the road? Is there a school there? I need to consider, like, when I'm bringing trucks in, you know, uh, is there going to be all traffic? What's going to happen? So, yeah, I think a lot of guys probably don't do that. But if you can show your customer that you've done a bit of research, um, they'll probably also love that. Yep, definitely. I had a demo one that came into my um, emails that they wanted me to, you know, quote some footings and. You, you could kind of tender whatever or however much you can buy it off. Um, and I looked at the property, didn't have much info on it on, on Google and things like that and realestate.com. So I just said stuff it, jumped in the car, went for drive. And mate, it was a you know pretty gnarly looking joint. The elevations were extreme. There, it was full asbestos picky box. I was like, this is, this is a nightmare. I don't want to touch this. So, nope. Yeah. Um, I, you know, tended just the excavation side of it, but um, I know that there would be so many variations to a job like that. Um, and that's something I make very clear when I send an email. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably another good thing uh, we can talk about one day is, you know, what to put in your quotes, um, what to put in your invoices and what to put in your quotes, you know, so that could be another good topic. Um, but yeah, once again, guys, uh, I really, really appreciate you coming on. I know it's a Sunday night. It's probably getting a bit late. Everyone wants to go to bed for our nice early starts. <laughs> um, but I think it's been a success, yeah, and I, and I really enjoy these chats, and hopefully all your listeners are getting some stuff out of this. Like I said, we, the whole purpose is to try and help each other out. So um, I'm really happy that we can we can give you that. Uh, if anyone has any suggestions, please put them forward, and we can talk about these um, topics and do some research and come back and do more episodes like this. Uh, guys, before we go, anything else you want to add? Uh, next week, Atacama, get on it. Make it happen. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I'll back that up. Atacama, you're going to do, do some English lessons to come in for next week? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope you still on. Later anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Set it up. Sign All right. Language. Now, one, that's it. Sign language. We'll do that. Yeah, we'll have to get someone on if we have to, yeah. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. I'll let you guys uh, log off and then I'll finish sure. up um, with the rest of it. Actually, Jack, did you see last week's episode? I did something special for you and you didn't even nah, attend that episode. I, oh, I haven't, mate. I, 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 yeah, that'll be a tomorrow job. That's Once right, I get mate. digging tomorrow, I'll uh, get into it. That's all right. I just I was wearing your T-shirt last week. I was, I was promoting oh, for you. How good was that? Like, yep. I so said, he's going to be on, he's going to be wrapped. He didn't even come on. How's that? <laughs> last Sunday, where was I last Sunday? I would have been oh, out for dinner, I reckon. Yeah, probably Actually, somewhere. I was. Yeah, because we yeah. just got back from holidays. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. All right. Now, I appreciate you guys coming on. Um, I really enjoyed this. Let's do it again. Yeah, if you guys are happy to do it, I'm definitely happy yeah, I'm yeah. for it. We'll never yeah. no dramas at all. Indeed, Ivan. Very good. Very good. All right, guys. Thank you once again. I'll let you guys um, log log out. Do you know how to do that from there? Or I'm going three dots. That's uh, the must... X, mate. The big X. The big X. Oh, that's yeah. it. All right, Shelby. Guys, thank oh, you yeah. very much. Have a good week, and I'll see you on the next one. Take see care. Crazy. See you, mate. Yep. See ya. There you go. They're both out. No, a lovely, lovely bunch of gentlemen. I really, really uh, thank the boys for coming on. I reckon it's really good. If you guys are happy with what we've been doing, uh, we can plan a few more like this. If you've got some topics you want us to cover, hit me up as well so I can uh, put those forward and we can prepare for them and bring them out to you guys. Uh, Terra Pro sending some messages. Sydney Rockwell saying awesome live. Good. Success. I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, before I go, make sure that you go to my website www.earthworkshub.com.au register your business on there register yourself on the site as then you become a member automatically if you need tip sites if you need any um or if you know of a tip site you can you can register one um if you have any events or if you're looking for work or if you're looking for a worker 
It's all on there. You can go on, find out what uh, the information you need, earthworkshub.com.au. Also, we've got the Facebook group. Uh, we've got my YouTube channel. So go on there and subscribe and like and follow and all that other stuff. TikTok, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube, like I said, um, Instagram, all the socials. So I'm basically on everything. Thank you very much for joining us on this Sunday evening. I wish you all the best for this week. Hopefully the workload starts picking up. I feel like it might be starting to pick up a little bit. I'm starting to get a lot more phone calls recently. But um, yeah, hopefully it all gets a bit better and busier and the weather starts improving for us as well. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.